positive change is the evidence of the spirit of Christ that you carry. The Bible tells me that if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away and everything has become new. Your mindset has to change. The way you see yourself has to change. Because when the anointing comes upon you, you become conscious that you are no longer an ordinary person. You become a vessel of honor. I was, you know, God spoke to me this morning. He was telling me, he said, the reason many believers are walking in defeat is because they don't know how to keep the temple. Your body is your temple. Your body is the temple of God. And in medieval times, the most sacred places were temples. We beautify temples. We make temples clean. We make temples holy. How can you say that your body is a temple of God and it, you keep defiling your body? Pornography sexual immorality how can you say that is the lord's temple a vessel that is reserved for god is a vessel that must be kept clean spiritually clean mentally clean and physically clean People will tell you about, you know, God is a forgiving God. God forgives, but we must always know that his forgiveness does not take away consequences. If you fall into sexual immorality, God is going to forgive you, but that forgiveness will not take away the consequences of your actions. God's going to forgive you for sleeping with prostitutes. But you may end up having AIDS and syphilis, getting sick. God's going to forgive you for committing adultery. But you have planted, you, by doing that, you plant a seed that will grow in your generation. God is going to forgive you for cheating people. But someday someone is going to cheat you or cheat your family members. The reason we ought to keep ourselves clean so that like the Old Testament people who were ready to sacrifice many things and keep themselves clean so that we can be bold to stand before God and say, God, where is the fire you promised? The reason some of you cannot stand in God's presence because the devil keeps whispering into your ears. I know what you did. I know what you did. I know what you did. Let's call spade a spade. A sinful man is not a powerful man. There are two types of prayers. The sinful believer comes to God's presence instead of calling down fire. God have mercy. As a prayer of a slave. But when a son who knows the father's will. When a son who understands the will of the father. Who knows that his body is sacred. Who knows that he walks in holiness. When he stands before God. He calls down fire. Leave the realm of sin. God have mercy. And enter the realm of dominion. Elijah didn't say. According to the word of the Lord, let there be no rain. He said, according to my word, there shall be no rain. Why? Because God gave the planet to him. Gave man dominion. He said, whatever you decree on earth will be decreed in heaven. For the fact that we've been praying and praying and praying and the COVID cannot leave this country in such a speed, it shows how weak the church of God has become. In the place I came from, people are going about their business. 
no one is dying because the place I came from, the people are crazy when it comes to prayer. I try to exercise my influence and pray over the entire nation. The reason my prayers cannot be effective over the entire nation because I cannot walk beyond the influence that God has given to me. Apostle Paul said, I'm an apostle to those who see me as an apostle. The reason team members are covered is because they see me as a servant of God. This is the way it works. When I was in Kesson province and the people perceived me as a minister of the gospel, I could say there will be no typhoon, there will be no this, and it didn't happen. Jesus could not do many miracles in Nazareth because the people did not perceive him. In as much as I want to pray and say let it end, if the bishops and the pastors will not join faith with me, my prayer is going to be useless in this country. Because a house divided against itself will not stand. So while the pastors and bishops are trying to put their house together, let me focus on team. Never exercise influence over people who don't recognize your grace. I was speaking with Bishop Cardin. I said, we never made ourselves apostles. An apostle, you become one when God has called you. But your grace, your influence, your level of influence is, going, is not going to be determined by what you want to do alone. How many people believe? Because you can't go and say, I'm an apostle, I'm an apostle. No. If they don't believe, you're wasting your time. Go to those who believe in you. I think I'm more effective ministering to those who believe in my calling than going out all over the place and ministering to those who just want to be happy, but they don't believe in what I'm saying. This is the way it works. We are God's temples. And he wants us to live as his temples. The anointing of God makes you bold in the pursuit of righteousness. It is not for cowards. It transforms us into mighty warriors of God with a strong desire to dethrone evil in every spectrum of life. The anointing is a flaming sword that God gives to you. Let's check the book of 1 Kings 19, 15 to 17. This was Elijah who was about to go home. And God said, anoint three people. So Elijah carried the anointing of three mighty men. He said, anoint three people to take your position. 1 Kings 19, 15 to 17. Then the Lord said to him, go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazel as king of Syria. Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king of Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat of Abel, Mehola, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazel, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. The anointing is a flaming sword. It is the word of God. It has the power to kill and to make whole. When you carry that anointing, it helps you to put an end to every assault from hell. The anointing is not for cowards. The anointing is not for the weak. The anointing is for the strong. When you carry that sword, you can put an end to sickness. When you carry that sword, you can dethrone principalities and powers. When you carry that sword, you can put an end to every assault. I speak right now and I take the sword of the spirit. I speak into your life that every incantation against you, every enchantment against you, every divination against you comes to an end today in the name of Jesus. I put an end to the power 
power of sin. I put an end to the power of depression. I put an end to the power of incantation against you. I put an end to every obstacle. I declare that your path shall be made straight in the name of Jesus. Every sorcery, every witchcraft, every necromancer, I command it to end in the name of Jesus. I declare by the Spirit of God, I declare that today you are spiritually circumcised. You shall no longer be a slave to sin. You shall no longer be a slave to this flesh. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare that you are stepping into territories, stepping into power, stepping into glory, stepping into new dimension, new horizon. In the mighty name of Jesus, I take upon myself the sword of the Spirit and I speak into Luzon, I speak into Mindanao, I speak into Visayas. Philippines, be free in the name of Jesus. Africa, be free in the name of Jesus. Asia, be free in the name of Jesus. North America, be free in the name of Jesus. South America, be free in the name of Jesus. Australia, be free in the name of Jesus. Europe, be free in the name of Jesus. Antarctica, be free in the name of Jesus. Let the wind of change blow through Metro Manila. Let healing take place right now in the mighty name of Jesus. There is something that stops a believer from manifesting the fullness of the potentials that God has put in him. It is called the yoke. The yoke is an oppressive agency designed for servitude and bondage. The anointing of God has the capacity to break all oppressive chains and limitations. The Bible tells me in the book of Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. It shall come to pass in that day. Tell your neighbor, say, today is that day. Uh, you don't sound as if you believe. You say, today, today. is that day. Today. It is a day of my freedom. Today. It's a day of my deliverance. Today. It's a day of my victory. Today. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder. And his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. It's not the oil that destroys the yoke. It is the spirit behind the oil. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Now, if I leave here, I'm going to talk about three types of yokes. The first one is the yoke of God. If the yoke is something that regulates your conduct, why does God need yoke? I'll explain. The yoke of God helps believers to learn obedience by regulating their conduct. Paul called himself a prisoner of Jesus. This yoke is easy. The burden is light. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29 to 30. Take my yoke upon you. Say, take my yoke. Why do you need to take that yoke upon you? Because if you don't take God's yoke, you are going to be lawless. Because you were purchased with a prize. And so the day you got saved, you were sealed. The seal of the Spirit is that yoke. You were sealed with God's Spirit. That seal simply means touch not. You know, when they place a seal on something, once that seal has been broken, that thing is dangerous. You can't use it. So we were sealed. And the brand we carry is better than Gucci. It's better than the biggest brand. It is a supernatural brand. It is a brand of favor. It is a brand of goodness. It is a brand of mercy. Surely goodness shall follow me. Not some days, all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So the brand you carry is a brand of favor. That's why God seals you. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. 
for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Instead of you to put upon yourself the, the yoke of God, some of you are putting strange yokes upon yourself. Then the second kind of yoke is the yoke of the enemy. The yoke of the enemy keeps people in perpetual bondage. Genesis chapter 27, verse 40. By your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother. And it shall come to pass, when you become restless, that you shall break his yoke from your neck. Are you restless? Poverty should make you restless. Sickness should make you restless. This favor should make you restless. Anytime God sees restlessness, he acts. The people of Israel were supposed to be in bondage for 400 years. But the Bible tells me that they stayed in bondage for 430 years. But the Bible tells me that God did nothing. But God only began to do something when the people groaned. When they cried. He said, Moses, I have heard the cry of my people. God is not going to change what you are comfortable with. Is someone restless with sin? Is someone restless with poverty? Is someone restless and saying, this pandemic has to end. I want my life back. I want my nation back. I want my business back. I want everything back. And when you get restless, you don't complain. You go down on your knees and you pray. You pray until something happens. Galatians 5.1 Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Stand in the liberty. The Spirit of God releases freedom. Some of you are not standing in that liberty. You have engaged, you've put yourself in things that ain't right. Stand in the liberty. We are free. But it's not an occasion for us to engage in wild things. Stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. When you get yourself into drugs. You get yoked up with evil. Don't get entangled with the spirit of alcoholism. The spirit of drugs, the spirit of prostitution, and immorality, the spirit of mammon, the spirit of lawlessness. Set yourself free. The worst prison you can be in is the prison of your mind. Free your spirit. Free your mind. Some of you, your mind cannot produce things. You can't think like God. You can't think like Christ because your mind is polluted by gossip. Polluted by pornography, polluted by conspiracy theories, polluted by things that ain't right. Free your mind. Free your mind. Then the last yoke is the yoke of compromise. The yoke of compromise can derail a believer from a godly path. This can manifest in business, marriage, and other forms of association. The Bible makes it clear in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. If your best friends are unbelievers, you're on the wrong path. If your boyfriend, your girlfriend is an unbeliever, you have derailed. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Because in ancient Israel, if you want to plow a field, you bring two strong animals, oxen. But you pair them with comparable strength. When God wants to bring someone into your life, God does not bring a liability even if the person looks weak. When God wants to give you a man or a woman or a spouse... Bible tells me that, and God gave Adam a wife comparable, a woman who has the same spirit, who has the same strength. 
So the mystery of the oxen is when you pair a weak one and a strong one, the strong one dies. Because the weak one does nothing, so the strong one begins to pull, including pulling the weak one until it dies. When Samson got himself yoked with Delilah, it caused his vision to be destroyed. Please, women, don't bring strange husbands to the church. Men, don't bring strange wives to the church. Some of you, you can't hold yourself. I'm sleeping. I'm, I just want to sleep with this woman. I, I, I want to sleep. Every time you sleep with a prostitute, the spirit of prostitution takes over your soul. The Bible makes it clear. He who sleeps with a prostitute is one with her. You sleep with a physical prostitute, it doesn't end with a physical realm. In the spirit realm, your mind gets fried. The spirit of prostitution begins to manifest. There's a recent study. The study was done. For a long time, they studied women. They studied and they saw that many women carry the, the DNA of men. And they were wondering where it came from. And they discover that every time a woman has sex with a man, the man deposits something in her body and it doesn't leave. Part of it goes to a certain part of her brain. So that means the more guys you sleep with, the more spiritual personalities and identities you take in. Have you noticed that prostitutes are very unstable women? Because when you open your body to different men and different personalities, the spirit they carry will begin to manifest in your life. One moment you are happy, one moment you are crying. One moment you are faithful, the next moment you are not faithful. One moment, please, surrender to God. You are killing yourself. You are killing the next generation. Any woman who keeps sleeping with different men is a foolish woman who does not know what it means to be a woman. Because a woman is not just a, a physical being, she is also a very spiritual being. God did not choose the man as a, an incubator. God chose you. And you can't open yourself to men all over the place. What is wrong with you? Cover yourself and give yourself dignity. But I can't control myself. If you can't control yourself, tell God to take you home. If you lack self-control, then go to heaven. Because you can't leave and continue to do these crazy things. Keep yourself holy. For God says, I am holy. Don't betray the spirit you carry. One, probably she's making a mistake. Maybe probably she's overtaking. Probably she's in love. Two, three, four, five. Is this a joke? You pollute your body and you're, you have strange sickness and they pray for you. Nothing happens and you say, God, why did you do this to me? The, because the Bible says, he who destroys, pollutes the temple, shall the Lord destroy. For all those of you who have, you, you've done things that are contrary to the word of God today, I declare that by the spirit of mercy, something good is coming out of your life in the name of Jesus. In conclusion, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. 
For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? No matter how cheerful the guy or woman looks, if they are not saved, they're living in darkness. Have nothing to do with them. There is a reason why the devil puts his yoke around you. He knows that if you begin to walk in the fullness of your destiny, his kingdom is going to be destroyed. He knew that if Anna's womb is opened, Hannah was going to give birth to the best prophet ever. So he blocked her womb. He knew that Joseph was going to be one of the best leaders that ever led on earth. One of the best prime ministers on earth. He tried to derail his destiny. The reason the devil is fighting you and trying to put the yoke around you because he knows that when you step into the fullness of your destiny plan, his kingdom is going to be in darkness. And victory will be granted to the body of Christ.